the goal of this video is to show how to move a system from one state to another state. So in this case, we have a double pendulum, which is in this configuration with the start given by these angles. And we want it to go to this configuration in some time. In order to do this, we'll first generate a trajectory profile for each of those two links. And then we'll have a tracking controller, which will track those angles and velocities as a function of time. In this case, we are interested in setting up a few conditions. We want the initial, we want to set the initial position and final position of the joints. We also need to set the initial and final velocities to zero. Since there are four conditions, we assume a third order equation, which has four constants. We set up these conditions and solve for the unknowns, which are the A's. And these are the formulas which come from solving the equations, the four equations. If you try to plot the joint angle as a function of time with some random values to the initial and final position, then you get profiles which look like this. The left side is the angle as a function of time. The right side is the velocity as a function of time. Note that the start and end point is what we had specified, we got it. And the start and end velocity is zero as intended. Once you do this, we want to track the system. For that, there are a couple of options. We can do it without any model-based control of, and just using feedback control, or we can use model and feedback control. In order to do the model-based control, we need to understand how equations of motion are used in Mujoko. So traditionally, the equations of motion are given by m q double dot plus c plus g equals tau. M is the mass matrix, C is the Coriolis uh, acceleration term, G is the gravitational acceleration term, and tau is the external torque. In Mujoko, the section reads like this. M is the same as this M. QFRC bias is the sum of C plus G. QFRC applied is tau. This is always available to you, irrespective of if you have specified actuators or not. If you have specified actuators, you could also use CTRL to specify tau. So there are two options to supply the torque. You can use either one of them. Once we know how to get the model, we can then use a bunch of controllers. Uh, this controller is called a proportional derivative controller, which basically just uses the gains and no model of the system. That is M, F, C, and G are used. We could also have a controller which does F, which is gravity plus Coriolis, and then the feedback, uh, the feed uh, back terms. And we can do a feedback linearization controller, which uses the mass matrix too. So in this case, in this video, we'll use case one and case three and note the difference in the tracking performance. I'm going to start off with this file, XML file, which I've created a double pendulum and uh, this template model pi file to start with. It's called that trajectory control. Okay. Let's run this. Okay, uh, once it runs, you see that there's a double pendulum and the vertically upright position is the zero position. Since there's gravity, the pendulum falls freely. I've not applied any talk to the pendulum yet. If you look at the XML file, you will see that I have defined two actuators, one on joint zero, the red link, and one on the joint one, which is the green link. Now, what I'll do here is I will start this, I'll simulate for five seconds. And uh, first I will uh, show you how to set the initial position of the pendulum because once we have that, then we can generate the profile and go from there. So my initial position is minus three times n p by two for the first link. And for the second link, it is just zero. What I'll do now is I set this position right before init controller. So data dot q pose zero is use zero init and data dot q pose 
one is q1 init. So this sets the position, but I also need a controller to hold on to that position. So for that, I'll just use a simple proportional derivative controller. So remember that I've set up an actuator which I can be accessed by data.ctrl0. So that will be, let's say, minus 100 times data dot q pose zero this is the position minus q zero bit and i'll put a velocity gain so data dot q well zero and so this is my uh, position controller on joint one i can do the same thing for joint two Now let's run this. You see that pendulum doesn't quite hold onto the position. That's because the gain is not strong enough. Let's change this to, let's say 500 and then just make this 10% uh, of the first AP gain. Now you see that the pendulum is staying in that position. Okay, now this is the initial position. The final position is Q zero end equals minus np dot pi divided by two q one n equals np dot pi by two okay uh, we've specified this now let's go and generate the trajectory for that what i did was i wrote down the code which basically gives me those constants a0 through a a2 and i'll just copy paste that code Okay, so this function, the inputs to the function are the initial time, the final time, the initial angle, the final angle. It computes A0, A1, A2, A3, the constants in that third order polynomial, and then it returns those coefficients. Now, I also need to specify initial and final time. So let's specify the init time to be, say, zero, and then the final time to be my simulation end time, which is five. So let's just make it Okay, now that I have the trajectory, I need to uh, I need to get those constants and I'll get those constants ahead of time or ahead of simulation. So that can be effectively done in my initialization of the controller. So I'll initialize and get those constants. So for that, what I do is I return this code, which basically calls this function, supplies the init time, final time, initial angle, final angle for the first joint. And then that will give me all these values. I can also do the same thing for the second or the second link or the joint number one. You know, these A's have my uh, coefficients or the constants. I would like to make them global variables because I would like to access them outside this function. So global a g yeah, i've made those global now let's try to work with this controller what i'll do now is i'll import these values in controller the controller function is called every uh, every control time loop so every millisecond or uh, depending on how fast the control loop is running. And so here I would like to generate the reference profile. So for that, what I need to do is I already have, so since the init control is called once, I already have those constants defined. I only need to use those constants to get my reference angle. So this is giving me the position of joint zero. It's basically taking A0, plus a1t plus a2t squared and so on. I also need to get the derivative. So for that, what I need to do is differentiate the expression. So I did that. And this is q dot, so derivative of this in the same format. I also need to do this for the second link. So I wrote the code ahead of time. This is the same thing as the first one, but uses uh, this these constants. 
Now, once I have this reference angle, I need to set it up here. So what I'll do is this one would be my Q ref zero. I also have a velocity gain, uh, sorry, velocity reference. So that could be Q dot ref zero. Same thing for the joint one over here. Let's try running it now. Okay, T end and Q end is not defined. Let's see what's wrong here. This should be T end and there is another error. Okay, it looks like it's fixed. Let's run this. Time is not defined, so I need to define this time. So this time is available here as data dot time, but let me define a new variable called time. So data dot time. Run this. Okay, I made an error in typing this. I think one. Let's run. Okay, you see that the pendulum goes from its start position to the end position. Again, okay, stops. Now. Uh, this is way too slow. Let me just increase the speed. The easiest way of increasing the speed is to change this from, let's say, T end from five to just change it to two. You can see it goes faster, but then it does something uh, crazy. Okay, the reason why it's doing something crazy is because remember that this profile, which I have, or this generate profile, is only varied from T in it to T end, so from zero to two. Beyond two, it does something which is not it is not supposed to do uh, because this profile doesn't really tell you what to do after that. So what we need to do is we need to cap the time. So what we'll do is we we'll say that if if uh, time is greater than the end, then we'll just cap it to the end, which will ensure that this Q ref will and q dot ref will hold on to the final uh, final position and angular velocity at the end of the time. So let's run this now. And now it stays steady. Now we can also do this by changing the initial time. So instead of having t in it as zero, let's go to one, which means that we need to account for the fact that this profile is not valid from zero to one. So what we'll do is we'll cap the time by doing if time is less than T in it, then just do time equals T in it. So it stops for one second and then goes for one second and then stops. Okay. Now that we've got these profile, let's try to make some plots and see what this, uh, what exactly, how good is the tracking performance? So for that, I'll define some uh, global variables. So this is for time. Q at zero is so that's for the initial the actual position of joint zero this is the actual actual reference position for joint zero and then i do something similar for a uh, link the second link now that i've said this let's try to fill this up we'll do this right over here or maybe here So t dot and data dot time q zero dot append data dot q pose zero q ref zero dot append data dot q ref zero, which is this value. Then uh, I can do the same thing for a uh, second link. So one, 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 two. Sorry, this is incorrect. This should be Q ref zero, Q ref. Okay, this looks this looks good. Now that we have this, now let's try to make plots. So I actually went ahead of time and then. Uh, did some of these things. I'm just going to copy paste parts of my code that I developed earlier.
Okay, so start and this is just to start and stop the animation. Now let's uh, put some things there. Let's plot the uh, plot p comma q at zero. Let's, let's say r. This is the actual position p and p dot plot p comma q ref zero. Let's say black. And we can also do the same thing for the second joint. One, two, one, one. Let's run this. The plot came on the other window, but looks it's bang on target. Now we want to. If you really want to see what the performance is, we probably don't want to do this, but we want to plot the difference. What we'll do is we we'll say PL P dot plot P, but we would like to plot the difference. So for that, we take Q F zero, Q at zero. So that's the difference. And then plot it with say k and we don't need this. So let's do this for the second into one one. Let's increase this time to maybe 10 seconds. Okay. Uh this seems to be an error. I I accidentally put the subtract the second one, which it should have fixed. Subtract it is back here and comment this and run this. And so you can look at the error. It's, uh, uh, I'm going to take a screenshot. You can see it's 0 0.04 and 0 0.02 for the second joint. Now that we have this as a reference, let's compare this against uh, what we could do with model-based controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now modify this to do model-based control. So this is PD control. Okay, I'm going to do next model based control, which is the back linearization. Yes, so what I'm looking for here is tau equals m times um, PD control plus. Uh, F. So let's code that. So first, they need to get the mass matrix. The mass matrix is uh, is going to be two by two. So M zero is two. Now you can access this mass matrix by going to M J full M model M theta dot. UN. Okay, this is a function which will give you the mass matrix. Uh, it is from the data dot QM and it is uh, printed in M, which we supplied here as a two by two. We also need the F term. For that, what we'll do is we'll go to F0 is data dot QFRC bias. So this will be the zero term. And then we have f1 equals data dot qfrc bias plus two. So now let's uh, save that as pd control, which is this part. So this is my bad. Let's just save it as f. f equals np dot array f0 f1. Okay, then let's uh, now do some gains, say 500 to be consistent with this. Uh, KD equals two NP dot SQRT AP. This is just ensuring critical damping. And then we have two terms, which will be essentially the same as this, no difference. 
let's call that pd1 pd0 is ap times this pd times this and then for the second link it will be pd1 equals ap times this kat now that we have that, let's track that into a array. So pd control equals p dot array pd zero pd. Okay, so we've got this part, and now we just have to assemble this. So what we'll do here is um, say tau m pd control, which is basically going to save this part, is p dot mat mul ma times pd control. So we've got this part, and now our tau is going to be this whole thing. So what I do is I do np dot add tau pd control with f okay and now that we have that we just simply do ctrl zero is tau zero and data dot ctrl one is tau one okay i think we all set this is an error okay this is the plot i got i'll take a screenshot it's between 0 0.02 and minus 0 0.02. Now we can actually compare the two. So I'm going to compare both the screenshots. This is what I got with just using a naive PD controller. This is what I got by using the feedback linearization. Note that the feedback gains were the same for both of them. Here the error was between minus 0 0.04 and plus 0 0.04. Here it's minus maybe less than 0 0.03 to plus 0 0.03. Uh, here's 0 0.02, uh, 0 0.01. So you see that feedback linearization is helpful in terms of reducing the error. 